In this tutorial, we will be adding a sprite to our game and we'll also see where we might be able to get some more sprites from for completely free. Let's talk about that. All right, first things first, what I wanted to tell you is we are going to use the simple dungeon crawler 16 by 16 pixel art asset pack, so quite a mouthful from O Lobster. The link here is of course in the description below. It's actually like a really cute small asset pack here, 2D pixel art. And I really love it. We're going to be using just the night for this one. So if you like this, of course, check them out and give them a download here for the entire pack. Otherwise, the night itself will be in the description below as well as in the Unity package. And there's one more stop where you might be able to get some free assets. And that those are the Kenny assets. This is by far one of the best places to get some free assets. Because Kenny, in all the glory and wisdom, has made them completely copyright free. So the, the assets, all of the assets that are on here are public domain. So you can use them however you want. You can change them. You can do with them whatever you want. And that is amazing because there are so many different things. As you can see, there are some space kits in sort of 3D. There's a hexagon kits. There are even sounds. There is almost everything you really need on Kenny. And I can really only advise you to first use some of those, build some prototypes, some games with that, because it's way more important that you get into the groove of just building a few things, trying a few things out, and you can make them look really good with some of those pre-made assets. You don't have to do everything yourself. Right, but now jumping back into Unity, the first thing we'll do is we'll make a new folder inside of our assets folder called sprites. That's kind of important. That's where all of our sprites will go. And then I will simply open another folder. So I have a folder here and I will simply drag out this night PNG here, drag it into here. You can see the little plus there and then it is inside of it. That's how easy it is to import a sprite. Now, of course, we need to do a few things to it. So if I click on it, you can see that in the inspector, there's a whole bunch of things that come up. We'll go through a few of them just so that you know what those mean. First of all, let's actually create a new scene. So this would be so selecting the old one, control D to duplicate it. And then this is going to be five sprites. Let's open it up and get rid of the mouse inputs here. And what we'll actually do is we'll take this knight and we'll drag it into our scene. Now, what you can see is that it's a tiny, tiny person here, like really tiny, but we will fix that, no worries. So selecting the sprite down here again, you can see there's quite a few options here. The first thing that you note is that this is sprite mode single. This simply means that this is a single sprite. So this image contains one single sprite. There are also things like sprite tile maps where you have multiple sprites in one image. Then you would select multiple. Polygon will not talk about at the moment. Now we know that this sprite is 16 by 16. So maybe what we want is that the pixels per unit, so unit is a one world unit, is exactly 16. So we'll put in 16 for now. The rest here are not going to interest us. The sprite editor is only important really when we're talking about multiple sprites. What is important, however, is the filter mode. We're going to put that to point because if you have pixel art in your game, then you want point. Otherwise, it gets sort of alienized and it's not going to be sharp. And then what we also want in this case is no compression at all here. And we'll also just put the max size to an incredible amount here because we actually don't want any compression. We want this to be as crisp and as good looking as possible. And as soon as we hit apply, we'll see that the night will grow to an immense size. Well, not really immense, but it's pretty good. And if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that the difference here, for example, in the point and bilinear is it's sort of blurry, right? And point simply means that it is going to be scaled up without any additional filter. And same with the compression, even if we have low quality, well, if we have low quality impression, even high quality compression, it's going to make the colors a little bit less vibrant, right? And now that we have this in here, that's pretty cool. So if we now select the night, you can see that it has a sprite renderer component on its game object. And this references the actual sprite here. So this is the basic relationship. And here we can change a few things as well. So we can, for example, give it a nice little different tone here, for example, green, or we can make it blue, maybe he was swimming around, or we can make it red. So it's an evil knight, something like that. There are some other things we can flip them around. So this is a purely visual thing where we flip them. Then there's some other things at this moment where we won't talk about. The only other thing is the additional settings of the order in layer. And that's a really interesting thing because what I will do is I will now duplicate this knight. So I will press control D and now we have two knights. So if I move this, as you can see, we have two knights and one of the knights is above the other. So knight one 
is above the other knight. If I change the order, because both of them have currently order in layer zero, if I change this order to negative, you can see that the new knight actually moves behind it. So the sprite moves behind it. And then if I go up, it moves in front again. So this is a very important thing. If you have multiple 2D objects in a scene, you will want the order to be exactly right for whatever you're doing. So that's something you should definitely be cognizant of. Let's delete the new light again here. We don't need that anymore. And that's actually how easy it might be to add a simple sprite to your game. And we have finally gotten to the point where we actually have some visuals to work with. This was definitely a more theoretical tutorial. However, still very important that you know, first of all, of course, where to get your sprites from. What's very important there is that you don't just use anything from the internet, especially if you actually do want to publish something. Always be aware of the license that the sprites are attached to. Otherwise, this can get you in some trouble, especially if you want to actually publish the game. Right, but that was it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. And next time, we will make this night move. I'll hope you tune in for that and I'll see you then. So, yeah.